In last video, we have seen frequency reuse and how the channel capacity is enhanced using frequency reuse. We have also seen the possible cluster size and the various cluster size figures we have seen in the previous video. Now we will try to correlate the cluster size and channel capacity. What is the relation between cluster size and channel capacity? You have seen that in one cluster there may be 7 cell, there may be 4 cell, there may be 3 cell, there may be 12 cell or so on. We took this example considering one mobile service provider has purchased 24 frequency spectrum from the government. Now how many users he can accommodate that calculation we can see to understand the, dif the relation between cluster size and channel capacity. So for example if we take a 12 cell in a cluster that means 24 divided by 12 so each cell will have two frequency and by the 8 time slot division roughly we can say that we have 16 user can communicate in a particular cell so in a cell there will be 16 users can communicate at the same time the same 24 frequency if we divide into the another cluster size that is a 7 cell in a cluster so now we can have 3 plus frequency in a particular cell and multiply by 8 so in a cell we can say that 24 users simultaneously communicate that means the channel capacity is improved if we decrease the number of cell in a cluster if we try to have the example of 4 cell in a cluster that means for each cell we may have 6 frequencies 24 divided by 4 so that will be 6 and each cell have 6 frequencies and each frequency have 8 time slots so 6 multiplied by 8 we have 48 users in a cell at a time they can communicate so if further we try to do that 3 cell 3 cell in a cluster so 24 frequency divide among 3 cells that gives us 8 frequency per cell and that gives 64 user can communicate in a cell so this how if we try to decrease the size of cluster then we can increase the channel capacity the question should be raised if it is so then why we are not decreasing as minimum as possible the answer will discuss in the coming slides but i am giving hint right now it is possible only to move from the higher cluster size to lower cluster size if we are able to deal with co-channel interference as you decrease the number of cell in a cluster that means the co-channel cell will be near to each other and that means the interference chances will be more so a GSM performance is possible only up to certain signal to interference ratio so to maintain that we have to assume a suitable or comparable cluster size so mostly we we do right now 7 cell in a cluster so this how if we do so many frequency reuses and by having so many frequency reuses if we try to see the overall impact of this cluster size on an entire state the previous table we have seen the channel capacity per cell now we try to see the same scenario for entire state so what will be the difference in that so if we try to see that in this particular table first three column are the repetitive that is a cluster size per cell frequencies and per cell capacity a simultaneous users can communicate but now we are going to add per cluster capacity the reuse number of cluster in a state and overall capacity so if we take this particular example and we have around 1200 cell in a state that 1200 cell we are going to use a different number of cluster say for example if we are taking a 12 size and uh, per cell we have two frequency and per cell we have 16 users but there are such 12 cell so 16 multiplied by 12 that will give us 192 users can communicate per cluster and 1200 total cell in a state divided by 12 cluster so 
we can prevent cell so we can have 100 such clusters in a state so if in a one cluster 192 users can communicate so in a state multiply by 100 that is 192 so 19200 customer can come at the same time in a state so this 100 shows reuse 100 times we are using the frequencies if we take the seven cylinder cluster and if we are having 24 plus users in a cell if you multiply first and third column we will get 192 so you can see here in all calculation in a particular cluster at a time 192 users are possible to communicate but because there is a seven cell we can have more number of repetitions so 1200 cell divided by seven that gives us 171 frequency reuse 171 times so 192 multiplied by 171 that will gives us 32832 similarly if we go with the four cell cluster and that gives us 48 users in a cell if we multiply first and third one we will get 192 users in a cluster and because 1200 divided by 4 that is that means 300 times we are going to reuse the frequency so that means we will have now 57,600 user capacity and for three cell in a cluster similar way if we calculate we are having 400 times frequency reuse and we are able to provide the channel capacity 76,800 so you can see when we move from 12 to 3 we here move from 19,200 to 76,800 that is a huge gap so it's a very good enhancement in the particular capacity so what we have seen here in this we have seen if we somehow try to get less number of cell in a cluster i mean we are able to understand if we are able to understand co-channel interference if we are trying to deal with the co-channel interference then definitely we can go with the low number of cell in a cluster and we can have more number of reuse and we can have very high capacity in a particular circle now we try to see <coughs> why different distance would be same between two co-channel cells so if you see the distance is different then interference will be different and the poor quality of service for the same now poor quality of the service means we don't know in which particular cell what should be the interference level so we once we know something these are the possible issues we can provide some solution but if you don't know about the issues how much dangerous level it is how can we provide any solution so that will be a poor quality of service if distance is fixed and pre-calculated then we can know how much interference we have to deal and we can of course have some solution for the same so there is always a trade-off between cluster size and interference so if you see if you take the small number of cell in a cluster then of course the reuse distance is small so capacity will be increased but at the same time interference will be more so one side we try to increase the capacity another side interference will be increased so if we try to decrease the capacity then interference will be also decreased so these are the trade off what we want we want a good capacity but with not a cost of quality of service if you are able to provide one lakh user at a time but if users are not able to get a clear talk with whom he is communicating then there is no meaning so there is a trade-off and we have to balance this trade-off by maintaining proper quality of service and one factor is defined that is called reuse factor if we say there is a seven cell in a cluster then we can say that the reuse factor in this particular image is one of seven if we have three cell cluster reuse structure then we can say one by three is a reuse factor if we have four cell reuse then we can say one by four is our reuse factor <coughs> in next if we see the role of signal processing in capacity with consideration of this coach and interference 
the reuse distance is depend on how much interference can tolerate by the handset so interference mitigation techniques by signal processing nowadays signal processors are much smarter than the previous signal processors so that allows us to handle the larger interference and so reuse distance make a small and so capacity is improved so you have to note here along with the communication fundamentals if mobile equipment manufacturers are having very good electronics in the side of processor then we can of course achieve good capacity with the help of that signal processing is play a major role and using a signal processing capacity can be increased so this was the talk about frequency reuse channel capacity cluster size now we'll see the shape of the cell and channel assignment strategies in the shape of the cell so for example if some mobile service provider want to decide where should be the location of the cell where i how i will use the number of antennas what should be the propagation of antennas he has to assume something on paper so on paper what should be the shape of the cell so ideally we consider mostly nowadays if you see in our previous slides also we have drawn the hexagonal cell but why we choose hexagonal cell for that we have to understand from the scratch if we consider a simple phenomena that we want to use one particular assumption that our antenna are omnidirectional so that coverage area is uniform everywhere in the radius so for that we understand the circular propagation in this way we can draw a circle if we required another place to cover we can have such number of circles everywhere and this way we can accommodate one particular area now here for if you observe these are some some gaps and these gaps must be filled but here it is not covered by any sort of antennas so this will be having some coverage from one particular frequency another frequency another frequency another frequency another frequency another frequency so these areas are very good covered but this area this area are definitely not covered and the people residing here will not get mobile coverage say for example there is one multi store building there are some corporate offices there is one one very congested uh, road but it is not served so these people are not getting proper mobile service so this could be not accepted at all so to avoid that if we assume the another particular arrangement here what you have seen it is a overlapping means we try to remove the disadvantage of the previous one so we try to adjust the cell in such a way that there should be no any gap the moment we try to remove the gap we observe that there are overlapping that means this is the area where we can see this is the area where we can see there is a two mobile tower propagation will reach at the same time and mobile user will continuously getting the hand of issues whether i am in this cell or whether i am in this cell and mobile will be continuously operating in that battery will be also discharged soon so this will be the scenario in the second case they are overlapping but this is not acceptable even so there should be no gap there should be no overlap so in circular choice if you see it is a natural choice to present coverage area of the base station but the problem is adjacent cell circle cannot be overlapped so one is a living gaps another is create overlapping regions and so circular is bad model because mobile system service provider must provide 99.99% coverage and in this one particular we have seen it is not achieved so in coming video we try to see some other possible shapes and we try to summarize what is the condition to consider a shape which is acceptable to design a cellular structure on paper and that design can be further possible to implement in the real scenario